what's the biggest takeaway from you being in the coaching room, being in the booth with Coach Lester, and getting that off the field perspective yeah. from your position? Um, I would say it's really just becoming more of a student of the game. You know, I got to see the game from a different angle. I got to see what the coaches was thinking at the same time. You know, as the situation we were in, and um, you know, it really helped me become more of a leader as well because. When you're not on the field, it's, it's kind of hard to really have a voice, you know, because you kind of feel like you can't really do anything for them. But, you know, just being there mostly and, you know, helping the guys out mentally was, you know, it helped me out a lot. So I think it had to be probably just being a student of the game. Terrell, obviously with the running backs, wide receivers that you've had, guys coming in, but now the express back, just talk about weapons on offense and what you can say to that this year. Um, yeah, it, I, I love it. You know, um, we have mismatches all over. We create mismatches with motions and, you know, guys just coming in from wing and everything. So I think it's going to be a great asset for us. Back at uh, ACC Media Day, we were talking about Ashton. You kind of called him a brother. How hard has it been for you to kind of balance that with him getting dismissed from the team, you know, having that friendship with him while also being a leader of the team and kind of understanding what may have to happen for the team to be at its best? Yeah, it's been tough, you know. Uh, that is like my brother, you know, they're all like my brothers, but, um, you know, I'll leave it up to Coach Shave to tell us what happened, you know, he's going to tell me himself, but it's been tough, you know, I, it's kind of a struggle, but at the same time, you know, I, I got a bunch of other guys I got to worry about. Does it, does it change what you can do as an offense at all with those, that hybrid group? No. Nah. Yeah. Can you talk about the offense and the potential of the offensive unit and then talk about the receiving board as well? Um, you know, like I said, the offense gives us a bunch of mismatches that we can create. Um, Coach Lester knows exactly what, you know, our strengths and weaknesses are, so he's going to really focus on that. Um, you know, I just I just love the offense, how it's really deceptive. And the receiving core, they've been doing a great job this whole summer. You know, they've been competing all, all since then, since the last season. You know, they've just been competing, competing. So I'm really excited to get out there and, you know, see, what, see what's going to happen. Tim Lester, just the things that he's taught you, how he's made you better on and off the field at this point going into this year for you? Um, a bunch of things. You know, uh, footwork is huge with him. You know, staying in phase, making sure that, you know, you're taking the right steps for the right route. You know, um, and just leadership skills. Like, he doesn't really t talk about leadership because he, he, he says he doesn't want his quarterback to be a leader in a way, you know, because if the quarterback's doing his job and not worrying about anything else, everybody else is going to do their job, you know, so. Everybody feeds off the quarterback, so you know, just just going out there and just having fun. Really, that's what he tells us. He doesn't he doesn't want us focusing on outside problems. Doesn't want us focusing on you know trying to lead the team. Just go out there and just do your job, and everything else will fall into place. Brent and Mike Terrell, specific to Steve Ishmael, what kind of leap do you think he can take? This year? Oh, he he could be great this year. You know, um, his confidence has skyrocketed. You know, he's he's very happy with what he's doing. You know, I trust in him. You know, um, he works hard. He works really hard, so you know we just gotta go out there and put it on the field. Is there a trait that he has that gives you confidence as a quarterback the most? Um, he never says no. I'll tell you that. Like, you know, even after we just finished running one tens or whatever, and I want to go throw, he's always like, you know, fine, I'm with it. Or sometimes if I'm tired, he'll be like, hey, T-Hunt, now we gotta throw. You know, so that's what I love about him. His drive is everything. Ace, Ace is, he's, I'm really proud of him. You know, he stepped up a huge amount. You know, he's a leader in the room. Um, you know, and I trust him with everything. You know, all I got to do is tell him one thing. He never tells me, oh, but I'm doing this. Nope. As long as I tell him, he's going to do it. You know, and if, it, and if I'm wrong, he'll do it and then tell me, like, hey, that's why I did it this way. You know, he never, he never back talks, you know, and I trust him. You know, I throw the ball up and I don't care if it's three defenders around him. You know, I'll throw it to him because I know either he's going to get it or nobody else will. Questions for Terrell. Joe, Terrell. Joe Bagnell from the Waterhead Joe Times. Um, Devontae and George, they're mentally one and two at a tailback. Obviously, we're still learning about what the express back is going to be. We're not going to know until the Rhode Island game, but what are your expectations for the tailback spot this year? Um, those guys are, you know, they're, they're like their best friends, you know, so they, they, they both. They do something the other can't, you know. Uh, Devontae's more of a straight down the hill line, um, you know, gritty back. Uh, Gmo could do the same thing, but he likes going out wide, you know. Um, they both could catch, they both could run routes. So 
I'm excited to see what they both could do. You know, um, they both are going to play, so it's going to be a huge asset to us. Right Offensive line, guys have had to shift, move. There's been injuries. What can you say about this unit? And obviously there's more guys coming in, but about the vets that are out there with you, protecting you, what you can say about that? Yeah, um, the guys that's out there protecting me, you know, I, I love them to death. You know, um, they just, even though they have to be moving around so many times, you know, they never, they never complain. They just take it and say, all right, I just got to protect. That's it. You know, um, Trudeau, he's been moved left, right, center, you know, he's never complained. He's just been taking it and just going with it. You know, Ivan, he's been moved from right to left. Amari's been moved, moved from guard, you know, so that's all I can say is that they never complain, you know, and if you got guys that are just willing to just go out there and do the job that they're presented with, hey, I can't complain either. Last two questions, Joe and then Steven. Uh, we've all read about Jamal Cousins' flirtation with basketball. He's supporting you with the piece that he can be one of the, you know, you can play college basketball, but uh, in terms of his ability to be in the red zone for you guys this year, I mean, with all that size, he's only a sophomore, but do you expect him to be a big part of uh, red zone opportunities for you guys this year? Yeah, definitely. Uh, with Jamal, you know, um, I don't know about whole, the whole basketball thing. You know? <laughs> I don't want him to play, but, uh, you know, he's six six. you know, he's a big dude. You know, he's still young, so he's trying to get it together and everything. But, you know, I think he's going to be a huge asset. When, once he finally gets his confidence and, you know, I'm real hard on him. Like, even when he does good, I tell him he did terrible, just just so he doesn't get, you know, content with what he's doing. So um, I think he's going to be a huge asset once he finally figures everything out. Last question for Steve. I was uh, talking with Jake Moreland early this summer about Josh Paris. He kind of said he's seen Josh be a little bit more dedicated, not de uh, interested in the tight end position now that he's kind of got someone who's played in the NFL teaching him. Have you seen any any changes in Josh's demeanor, and do you expect you know anything particular from this year? Yeah, I expect a huge amount from Josh. You know, uh, um, Josh is Josh. You know, he's, he's going to. He, he's the guy that, you know, he gets under the defense skin because he's going to be talking to him. He's going to be talking crap. He's going to be talking trash, you know, because that's what he does. But he's also the guy who's going to bring it when you have to bring it. You know, um, he's been doing a lot better. He's been shedding his weight, you know, getting bigger. And um, I'm just happy to have him back, you know, and I can't wait to go out there and just see what he's got to offer because he is the leader of the tight ends room. He's been in there the longest, so I'm expecting a great amount of things from him.